WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, home of Southern Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. J Commando of a 45s Affair radio show where I play all vinyl 45s. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, Noon in Georgia. Calvary Sonoy Fellowship is an expository Bible teaching church where we study the Word of God line by line and we apply it life by life. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock on WQEE and we look forward to having you join us. Our church offices are located in Sonoy, Georgia, 6855 East Highway 16, Suite 102, Sonoy, Georgia. If you'd like to call us, our number is 770-755-8243. Or you can reach me, I'm Pastor Bob, at bob at calvarysonoy.org, S-E-N-O-I-A. You also can go to our website at www.calvarysonoy.org. You can reach our YouTube channel there, as well as our Facebook page. Join us at 10 o'clock right here on WQEE. Tune in each Sunday morning right here on WQEE 99.1 FM for the key for help from a high with Bishop Daniel Holloway Sr. of Redemptive Life Worship Center at 9 a.m. Hear the Word of God and soak it in. You can join us for our live Sunday service at 10 o'clock a.m. till 12.30 p.m. at Redemptive Life Worship Center at 2265 Highway 54 in Marlin, Georgia. Have a blessed week. Extra, extra, extra. God's newspaper boy, Elder Gerald Alfred, is inviting you to listen in to the Voice of Reason broadcast, bringing you fresh revelation from God's Word for today, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I'll have a seat for you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM. I am Apostle Deborah Harris. 
Pastor, Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia. Presenting Connecting the Kingdom. Connecting Kingdom citizens, Kingdom businesses, and advancing the Kingdom of God in this hour. Join us each Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are sharing their faith, business, and ministry. Hey, I'm Jimmy Ellis, and I'm the pastor here at Noonan City Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to our website and hope that you'll take the time to look throughout the website, all the different activities that are going on in the life of our church. Our purpose statement here at Noonan City is transforming lives for Jesus' sake. And we believe that takes place in three separate pillars. The first one is corporate worship. We come together each Sunday for our worship services where our focus is on glorifying God. That is the, the purpose, the focus of our, of our um, worship services each Sunday. The second pillar is local missions. And we believe that church is not to be contained inside the walls of a building, but rather outside those walls. And we look for opportunities and we have different partners in the community where we partner with other kingdom-minded ministries that are doing kingdom work. And so encouraging our individuals here at the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus outside the walls of our congregation. So that's the second pillar. And the third pillar is our community groups, our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here in Noonan. And the focus of these groups is simply Bible studies, sitting in the circle, opening up the scriptures, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us as we study God's Word. So those are the three pillars. And we believe when you do those three things that there's a transformation that takes place in your life. And that will transform your own family and transform our community and thus making a difference for the sake of Jesus. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you Sunday. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. International with my husband, Elder Kenneth Harris. And we're always excited about the work of the Lord and doing God's bidding. And today, he's not here with me physically, but he's here with me spiritually. And we have a special guest in the studio with us today. And uh, I'm going to let her introduce herself to you. But I will say that when I met her, uh, immediately we had kindred spirits, and that was we were sisters. We are sisters Amen. in the kingdom of God, and that was that was very obvious up front. So, please introduce yourself and tell them who you are. Good morning, Facebook audience. I am Pastor Beverly Kempson, native of Atlanta. All of my life, yes. Mm -hmm. um, graduated from Frederick Douglass High School in Atlanta, attended wow. Emory University in Atlanta, Reinhardt College in Georgia. I'm um, happy to say that none of those things are at the top of my list. The top of my list, I'm born again and filled with the fire and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't love God. I'm head over heels in love with him. Hallelujah. Wherever I go, he goes. And if he can't go, I don't belong there. <laughs> so, Glory. with that being said, I have two beautiful daughters, Santana Kempson Wright, um, with City of Atlanta Council, and a beautiful baby girl, I call her still my baby, Crystal Kempson Daniel, and three beautiful grandkids that I love dearly. And I have to say, Two grand doggies, because my daughter would have a fit if I didn't mention those grand doggies. Thank you. <laughs> I've never mentioned my grand doggie. However, you have I, to. I know I love her to pieces, 
and her name is Bella. Oh my God! And you know, uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Kenson, Yes. I, as I mentioned in the introduction, it is such a blessing that if you don't know someone in the natural by name in the past, mm -hmm. you can know them by the Spirit yes, immediately. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, and then we found out that we have a, another friend in common. Well, two friends. Pastor yes. Karen, who yes. introduced me, and my sister Tracy. Your sister Tracy. My mm -hmm. God. What yes. two beautiful sisters yes. in Christ. Sister Karen Past uh, Sister uh, Tracy. Yes, both. Both a beautiful, Amen. sold out Amen. to God. Yes. And that's what we need in this hour. Mm. But, uh, Pastor, listen, yes. we, uh, let me read this uh, chapter 1, verse 5 of Jeremiah. And it reads, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordain, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. We know that Jeremiah was one of the major Old Testament prophets. Mm -hmm. God used Jeremiah mightily. Yes. But I want to say this. It's not about... What what uh, Pastor Beverly and I are going to talk about today is not about the call uh, of God, the fivefold ministry gift calls, okay? It's not about the prophet necessarily, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, um, and the uh, teacher, pastor, that I get them all. But it's about every individual because here's the truth. Just as God knew Jeremiah, mm -hmm. he knows you too. Yes. It doesn't matter if you've been called into the fivefold ministry uh, for the body of Christ. But what does matter is that you're still living, you're still alive, you're still breathing, and God has ordained you for purpose yes. and work in the kingdom. Come on. My God. My God. Jump in anytime, Pastor. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I'd have to elaborate on what you said, woman of God. Um, yes. It doesn't matter. You may not have a title. That's right. That you're familiar with. But your title is you are a born-again believer. Yes, ma'am. That you've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. And that you are joint heirs with him. Mm. Yes. And so many times we are looking for titles and we get caught up in the titles. Yes, yes. Come on, we, let's we really talk get about it. caught up in the titles. Yes. Um, Dr. Sansa and, and our plaques on the wall and so forth and so on. Yes. Truth be told, when we go before the master, Come on. none of that is going to matter. Absolutely none of it's going to matter. As a matter of fact, some of those things are going to keep some people Ooh. from making it. Jesus, glory. Because many of those plaques have become our God. Ooh. Many of those things we're bowing down to. My we God. have an air about ourselves in the body of Christ. Yes. It stinks in my nostrils, so I know it stinks in the Lord's nostril. Come on now. Because naked we came. Yes. And naked we're going out. My so God. So none of those things are going to matter. He's going to want to know, well, how many have we led to Christ? Come on. He's going to want to know, when they were hungry, did you go feed them? Come on. Was it a once a year thing so that you could post it so that everybody could My see, God. you know, this is what I do once a year? Yes. Come but what is, it, what is it that we're doing with these people on a daily basis? That's Are we it. arrogantly sticking up our nose? You know, I'm, I'm not in that category. I'm not in that league. They're not in my league. God forbid. Yes. Christians have got to come down off of our horses. My it's imperative. God. It's imperative. Come down yes. off of those high horses. Come down off of those high horses, yes. My God. He's looking for a horseman that he can ride that will go wherever he sends them. My so God. if he said go in the gutter, that's where we will go. Come if he said go to the ghetto, that's where we will go. My wherever God. he sends us, that's where we will go. We sing this song. Come on. Where he leads me, I will follow. That's it. But we're really lying. Because <laughs> truth be told, where he leads us, we most of the time don't want to go. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because, see, we can't use all of our accolades and all this and that and whatever you. God forbid. Yes. 
But what we have, such as we have, be it unto them. Now look, Pastor Michael, you started out by saying your, you graduated from Emory University and Reinhardt University. Attended. Attended. Okay, yes. You attended. You attended. And, but you made it clear. But that was not. Oh, God. That was not. A, it's, it's nothing great about that. No. You, you matriculated. You went through. You did what you did. But listen, the most important My thing God. is that born again degree. Yes. That most people don't have. And then you say it. And this is, the, listen, <laughs> this is powerful. The plaques on the wall, mm. they have become our gods. Mm. And haven't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. They have become our gods because the plaques on the wall, and I tell the people here in this ministry, yes, I have some plaques on the mm. wall, but they absolutely mean nothing. 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 As a matter of fact, most of what I learned, I can't use. Jesus. I can't use it Jesus. because if I try to use it, mm -hmm. then I rule out the person, the presence, and the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't necessarily need my degree. No. He needs my heart. My God. He needs my soul. Jesus. My mind. He needs all of me. Yes. Rather than the plaques on the wall. Oh. Now listen, you and I both know, and we're not downplaying, no. you know, the education. No. But we've got to keep it in perspective. We've got to keep it prioritized. Yes. It cannot be first. My God. But it has to be after God. Yes. God has to be first. A man or a woman after God's own heart. Yes. 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 And so, see, we're so busy seeking more knowledge, more earthly knowledge. Yes, yes. That we are no heavenly good. Right, So right. we're seeking so much earthly knowledge that we don't even know how to take it and apply it. And it reminds me of, what was his name? Nicodemus. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. He was so smart, so yes. intelligent, that when God talked to him about being born again, he couldn't understand. My God, my God. It was over his head. My God, my God. Went to the best of schools. Yes. So, yes. come on. Come on. Look at Paul. Went to the best of schools. Well educated. Yes. But what was Paul doing when the Lord found him? Persecuting the Christians. Yes. And so many Christians now are persecuting Christians. Yes, they are. Yes. In ignorance. God forbid. God forbid. My God. God forbid. My God. So, uh, Pastor, as we have made it clear that every one of us, and this, listen, I've been on this chosen series for a minute here because God is, he's, he's, it's, it's like a, a burning in my mm. soul to help people come to the understanding. Listen, it's time out. For procrastination. Yes. It's time out for laziness. Yes. It's time out for um what 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 would be the word? It's time out for uh complacency. Yes. It's time out for all of those things. It's time that we get our house in order uh -huh. with the Lord. the Lord. Because if and, and this this is this is such a revelation, and it's not deep because it doesn't have to be. But if you're still living and breathing, you've been chosen. You've yes. been chosen. Yes. God, if you are still living and breathing, there is something for you to do. Yes. And I'm going to keep emphasizing that. Much to do. I'm going to keep emphasizing that. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the truth of the matter. Even some of us as leaders... We build a big church. Mm, oh we fill it to, to mm. the capacity. And then we think that we have arrived mm. and that we're done. Mm. No, we're not. Because if people are still sick, mm. if they're still hurting, yes. if they're still broke and living in poverty, there's still much work much for work. all of us to do. Much work. Because Jesus went to the cross and with the crown of thorns, the blood, the blood that came out with those storms killed poverty. Yes. So 
We are, listen, pastor leaders, we are not finished. We have a lot of work to do. Yes, we do. And we need everybody else connecting, connecting, yes. connecting, 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 so that they can help us. My God. That's what we need. You know, my sister, as I was listening to you, I couldn't help but think about, um, I am a part of a worldwide prayer ministry, uh, Welling Women Worldwide USA. Yes. Um, and, and we are 24 hours, seven days a week. My and and as you were speaking, I was like, she's all up in the prayer points. Um, <laughs> uh, some of the things that God has Christians repenting for. Now, he's not talking to the world. Come on, Because uh, we are the light of the world. Oh, Lord. Come on. We are the light of the world. Come on. And, and God wrote this and had men and women of God to write these books in the biblical days, but he's talking to us now yes, in 2023. Is. Yes. So is. this blood's for us and this Come word on. is for us. Come on. God's no longer talking to Jeremiah and all of them, Esther that. and none of those, Deborah and so forth, and Eunice and Lois. He's talking to Beverly. He's talking to Deborah. He's yes, talking to that. all of us Yes, ma in this day and time. Come but on. as you were speaking, I said, oh Lord, as, as you were speaking, I was just just reminiscing uh -huh. some of the things that we need to be repenting for and you were steady speaking to him yes, as if God. you wrote this My God. he says let us repent of sin that we have individually committed Come on. how have we God. committed these sins yes, you God. say oh I'm a good person mm -hmm. I go to church every now and then <laughs> I watch it on Facebook, whatever. My God. No, but he says we have committed these sins in words. Yes. In our thoughts. Come on. The way that we think. Come on. Who does she think she is? How you doing, Sister Sauce and that helpful? Oh, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. These are Christians. You gotta say that. We're robbing God. We're you robbing God. Why are we robbing God? In tithing and all praying. Oh, now, my God. We can find money to do everything with. Come on. Everything will. You better say to that. To purchase anything we think we want to purchase. You better say that. Anything we think we imagine that we want. Can we I find the money to do it. You better say that. But now. will a man rob God in tithes and offer? How else are we disobeying him? And you were steady saying some of these things. Oh, indeed. Witchcraft. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sit down up in the church. Witches. <laughs> All up in God's house. Uh huh. My God. So if you're witching the church, you're witching your community. Come on. If you're witching the community, you witch. Listen, when when you are amongst your family members. Come on now. If you are a witch among your family witch. members, that's why you don't have any power on your job. A witch is a witch. <laughs> I don't care how well you dress. Come on. Witches. Witches. Warlocks. He said, how else are we sitting? And you were just there to speak. And I was like, oh, Lord. She sure she didn't write this. <laughs> Sexual perversion. Come on. Uh -oh, we don't want to go there. Because everybody's saying a new song. It's my thing. I do what I want to do. That's what they're saying. You can't tell me who to sock it to. That's what we're saying. That's what they're saying. It's my thing. I do what I want to do. Well, I got news for you. It ain't none of your thing. Come on. If you think it's your thing, when you, where were you when he put the sun in place? <laughs> where were you when he told the ocean to go here and spread here so many My thousands God. of miles? Where were we? Where were we? God forbid, but that's the arrogance of the church. Yes, it is. This is why we can't draw the... <laughs> The Christian. This is why we can't call the other folk in because of our error. And then here was one you said. Stubbornness. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. When you said it, I was like, stubborn? Oh, no. Yes. Christians, we're not stubborn. Oh, yes, we are. God forbid we can pray all in tongues and everything oh. else. And we'll be cursing you out the next minute. Say that. Christians. Say that. Say now, that. let this not be an excuse for folk to say, well, that's why I'm not no Christian. No, because see, that's why God needs you, so you can help some of those who are struggling. Yes, so that, that's the excuse. Come on, see, you don't stop going to the grocery store because somebody walked to the grocery store and shot up some people. You still keep going to the grocery store. Yes, you will. <laughs> uh huh. So you can't render God excuses by that's why I don't go to church. That's why I'm not a Christian. Disobedience, unforgiveness, uh oh, that unforgiveness. Oh my God, my God. See, we're some of the same hard-headed people that they were back in the biblical days. You better say that. Some of the same hard-headed Arab people. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. 
And again, I'm not knocking education, but we will spend money in abundance educating our children, and the same children will walk off and leave us, ignore us. I'm seeing more and more and more of it. The same children that we're out there breaking our necks working three or four jobs. Say that. Three or four jobs to educate them. And then when they're needed, they're nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. God forbid. You know why? Because we place our priorities in the wrong yes, place. It is. That's Thou it. shall have no other God before me. And I know we don't want to see education as a God, but we can make anything into a God. I can make myself into a God. You better say God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. The call that I ride, I can make it into a God. Yes. Yes. My God. The money in the bank. God. It's all going to perish. It's all going to perish. So, I just had to throw that in there, my sister. Not, listen, listen, my God. Of you even spoke of complacency. He said, let us repent of complacency. I now, you know you that. haven't read this. I have not mm -hmm. read that. But you spoke it. Indulgence. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. He said, we'll focus on things that are of lesser value, and we neglect the things of eternal benefit. My God. Yes. That's what we're doing. Let, let me tell you something. Same thing they were doing back then. Powerful. Now, I know, and this is what blessed me when I first met you. I learned then that you were a woman of prayer. My God. When you are a person of prayer, God is going to show you uh, many things. Okay? And he will show you how to pray. Yes, but, but that that blessed me, but you just said, you just said so many things that need to be said. Now, mm. confirmation, this is where God has us in this yes. ministry. Mm. We are what I call getting down to the nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's time out for mm. church as usual. Mm -hmm. Not the formality. But yes. Looking yeah. like a Christian. That's it. Uh -huh. Come in and talk like one. Come in. Uh -huh. Come in. Come in pretending that you're mm -hmm. saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and you leave, and you're still the going through the motions. That's it. Uh -huh. That's it. And it's time out for that. It's time to get to the nitty gritty. It is time to be delivered from witchcraft. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's time to be delivered from pride, mm -hmm. and it's time for the witches to know that we know yes. who they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. We know who you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, okay. and we're not intimidated. Oh, Good God Almighty. Hey, you better say that. Not with this God I serve. Uh oh, no. Mm -mm. What did he say? Anybody that contend with us, he will, he will contend with them. You mm -hmm. Christians have got to stop all of this. Uh, you know, we are serious. We are cursing the body out. Yes. But we won't defend our God like that. Good oh, God Almighty. God. Listen. 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 We have to be as the running David mm -hmm. was, standing against Goliath. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, 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 friends. The greater is he is. Yes, us. yes, listen, friends. We're talking about you being chosen, rising up to the occasion. Yes. So that you can see what we see. Yes. Everybody. With spiritual eyes. With spiritual eyes. Uh -huh. Because what we see can't be seen in the natural. Mm -hmm. We can't see. Everybody. Look, the witch. Does not wear her costume. My God. The witch wears nice mm -hmm. clothes. The witch may even wear ribbing hair. My, my, my. Yes. Uh -huh. The witch may uh -huh. even have on um, stiletto yes. shoes. But you have to know she's a witch yes. by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it's time for the church yes. to rise up. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to talk about this right here. Mm -hmm. It's time for the church Wake to rise up. Wake up and rise up. Wake yes. up mm -hmm. and rise up in this hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like this. Um, and you and I don't get it off real well. Because <laughs> here's the truth. I, I look, I feel your spirit. You're on the battlefield well, for our Lord. I mm -hmm. mean, on the battlefield. And we ain't taking no nope. nickels. Nope. We know who you are. Mm -hmm. We know what we know by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. But but listen, uh, Pastor Beverly, do you understand, and I know you do, here's where the church is lacking. They have left mm -hmm. out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and they've been trying.
trying to do it by education. Uh -huh. They've been trying to by replace God by intelligence, mm -hmm. by any means. intellect. Mm -hmm. But you can't do this work by intelligence, intellect, and education. It has to be by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm reminded as you're speaking, Apostle, of the days when I was a girl coming up. How, uh -huh. we, how we've fallen so from the Lord. Yes. With education and everything else. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Not technology. Come on. Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything we're trying to replace it with. Our children, whatever. We're just, we're just trying to find some other God to fit in. My God. But I'm reminded of when I was a child growing up. My dad had a saying when it was time to get ready to load up for church. Uh huh. Um, he wasn't going to say it, but one time, all aboard. <laughs> All aboard. Oh, not aboard. You better get your plank. My God. Now, what he was saying was that in a few minutes, be out there under that carport, in that car. There you go. And I remember the days that my sisters, all older than me, they were actually putting on their pantyhose in the back seat of the car. Come on now. Mm -hmm. That's just how serious people were about that their walk is, with the Lord yes, that day. Yes, yes. Now this yes. is show. I'm saying this to show us how far we've fallen away from there Him. There you go. Come on now. So now we got more education and now less fear of God. Come on. My so God. Uh, Daddy said what he meant. He didn't even raise his voice, Holly. And but he, he said what he said. meant, and he meant what he said. That's when he said, "Be home at twelve o'clock," it didn't matter that my sisters were twenty-one years old, twenty-two years old. Come now on. we can't even tell a six-year-old what to do, and we sit back laughing at the devil because we don't realize these are demons operating. Oh, Jesus, glory. taking over. There you go. So we've fallen so far from the day. Back in those days, we tarried. There you go. We don't even know what that definition is now. <laughs> so you know what? Now we're compromising. So we can have three, four services so we can collect four or five offerings. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Keep yes. it real. Keep so we can buy real. 12, 14, 20 cars yes. that we won't let not one member ride in. <laughs> help us. Help us. Help us. Help us, Lord. Come on. Man. Help us. Come on. Now we are acquiring more things. Yes. And as we are acquiring more things, we're no longer making room for him. We pushed them out. Come on. I can't think of the author's name, but uh, he, he wrote a song entitled, I Will Make Room for You. My God. I will make room for you. Mm -hmm. And whatever you got to move out of the way. It may be painful when you move it, but move it. If it's going to get in the way, I'll make room for you. But no, nowadays, uh, we don't even tell the children they have to go to church. No. Uh, really, we say, um, say them, give us the words. Well, you know, they, they, you know, they make their own decisions. Wow, no wonder the enemy is taking over the schools. No wonder the enemy is taking over the homes. Uh-huh. Yes. Because we're telling the children, oh, they got an option. You know, I don't believe in making my child do whatever. You know, Satan knows how to give us some words. He, he knows how to put all kinds of stuff in our mouth. Yeah, my children, you know, they, 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 first of all, they're not yours. And that, thank you. We're on borrow time. And you better say it. So I should not tip the Lord that God with all that arrogance about my children. Come on. God for God. Jesus. And for me in my house, what did Joshua say? We uh, shall serve. Now over here, you might not want to. <laughs> and you may not choose to. There you go. But you won't stop me. I'm serving. And as for me and my house, yes. we're going to serve the Lord. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And where are those people? Listen, again, we started this broadcast. We're not talking about the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. calls. We're talking about every individual. Let's start with the call, because mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about, mm -hmm. the call of a mama. Uh-huh. A mother. Okay. Praying mothers. Praying mothers. Mm -hmm. Training your children in the admonition and the fear of the What Lord. did he say? Train them up in the... There you go. But you just said, we have compromised. Uh, uh, well, well, I in the last hour, we're compromising. Look, I give them a choice. Mm -hmm. They can decide if they want to go to church. If they want to go to heaven or hell, because that's really what they're deciding. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus, you said mm -hmm. that? That's really good. And there are no exit doors, nor five extinguishers in hell. Oh, my God. So they don't need nobody hooping in a home. Come on now. And call him off. Uh-huh, and call him Jesus either. Because he's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you. you when did you spend any time with me? 
And here's the thing, Pastor. These mamas and daddies have to understand because I raised my two, and this is what I said to them. First of all, I'm going to raise you so somebody else can stand you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I love that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because that's the problem with a lot of people in this world today. These children grew up. Mm. And they have the most distasteful spirit mm -hmm. on them mm -hmm. because mama and daddy did raise them right. Then you've got to raise your children because one day they will become an adult. Yes. Listen, the 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 different people that went out and shot up oh, Jesus and Balls mm -hmm. in these churches, they were babies. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Look, God said to Jeremiah. Before I form thee, mm. before, no, he said, yeah, before I form thee in your mother's womb, mm. I already knew you. Yes, before, before, uh-huh. And here's the problem, pastor. God birthed these children into the earth, mm -hmm. and he left it up to the mamas and the daddies mm. to train them in the admonition of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It ain't God's problem. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault that you failed to do your job. Mm -hmm. But you will be held accountable. Because we were chasing after John and Mike and Kelvin and Teddy and Ray Ray and yeah. uh -huh. Lulu and Ray uh -huh. uh huh uh huh uh huh. Turn out the lights. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You don't need to turn no lights on. No, out. turn the lights on. Shine the light from heaven Come on. down on our souls. <laughs> the light need to be turned on. Because mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing in the dark. First of all, you ain't coming up in there. <laughs> Come on. Help us, Jesus. I know that's another. <laughs> another. And that's okay. Uh, my God. Help us, Lord. <laughs> my God, my God. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because you, our sister mm -hmm. gonna fall down. <laughs> standards, standards, uh huh. Yes, mm -hmm. we all fall, but he told us to stay down. Not falling, just keep falling. We need to come out out of this. All my children, y'all, is come on the edge of night. You mm -hmm. on it, Pastor? You are on it. Listen, you are shipwrecked <laughs> and lost because mm -hmm. we on the ship. And we're on the ship and we're not equipped. Come on. No word in us. You better say that. Why am I wasting my time going to what I call the house of God and I come out and I can't quote not even two scriptures? Not two. Because you know what? No accountability. God forbid. These pastors. Now we're going to talk about these pastors. Babysitting folk. These and pastors. Too, mm -hmm. That's it. These pastors. Mm -hmm are not holding these people of God accountable. How you, are, how can, listen, I don't know about nobody else, but sin stench nostril of God. Yes. Am I right? Yes. How can a leader sit in, come into the house of God and know a person is wallowing in sin and not hold them accountable? Because they got four or five babies and everything else out there in the audience, so they better keep their mouth closed. Ugh, Can I keep it real? Keep so they got to make sure that money keeps rolling in so they can pay Jane off so she can keep her mouth closed. <laughs> Carolyn, so she can keep her mouth closed. Lulu, so she can keep her mouth closed. Boy, you all did I tell you. I mean, my God. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. My God. And again, all have sinned. Yes. But we, we like to take that scripture and throw it around like it's going to rescue us. And no, because we misquote the scripture. Come it on. says, for all have sinned. Never did it say, oh, keep on sinning. You better say that, Pastor. There you go. There you go. And see, that's what we're doing. We are continuing to sing it. And we want a band aid. Mm -hmm. We're getting band aids. That's yes. what they're doing up in these four pits. That's what they're doing. Give it out band aids. Yes. Uh -huh. That's it. Bring this, your money in. Not in this house. Mm -hmm. and because here's the truth of the matter we should want to live the abundant life yes. now in this earth. Yes. Don't uh, continue in your singing mm -hmm. so that 
you can uh, have an excuse and say, well, but God knows my heart. God understand. He does know your heart. He, he does. Says, he told Jeremiah in the 17th chapter, mm -hmm. he told Jeremiah, he said, I know your heart is wicked. Wicked. Evil. Uh-huh. And we don't, we don't, you know what we say? All up in my business. Now that she is all up in my business. You know what? I remember people, a uh, few people would tell me years ago, oh, I enjoyed your preaching. You just preach long. I said, well, you stop sinning long, I'll stop preaching long. <laughs> That's what God told me. <laughs> but I said, can I get a high five? <laughs> I'm serious. Uh -huh. See, they want microwave sermons. And, and, and you see. But we're going to work all day long, then we'll work overtime, triple time, Come and then on. the money I already spent before we even get the check. <laughs> My God. And we don't see Satan using us. I'm mean, serious. It's already spent before we get it. But. We want a short term. I don't care if it's a social security. That includes those two. Social security, disabilities. I say, well, I don't work anymore. I'm retired. It don't matter. You don't never retire from the kingdom. Oh, come on. Good God Almighty. No, you don't retire from the kingdom. I mean, my God. And he pays us, oh God, in ways. My God. That we can't even fathom. Cannot. Mm -hmm. I like to tell people what you out there killing yourself for. I just serve him. There you mm -hmm. go. And he rewards me. Look, oh, Jesus. I see oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I just serve him blindfoldedly. There you go. And he just opens up the wonders of heaven and pull out a blessing. My God. Yes. And every time the enemy thinks he's robbed me of something here, next thing I know, God's tripling that in another way. My God. And I don't have to say a word. Just serve him. And look, all that we can ask or think, you just have to think about it. Yes. And just desire yes. it. And yes. God brings it to Yes. You. Yes. My God, Pastor. My God. Listen. We need, this is what we need. We need the truth of God's word. Yes. To live holy. That's why we can't live holy. Because they're not getting it. That's it. You know what people are saying? How popular my church is. How many people were at church? Oh, the parking lot was so full. Oh, I had to ride around for about 10 minutes trying to find a parking space. Oh, this person is popular in my church. This person is popular in my church. But we need to be asking the question, is Jesus up in your church? Uh, even more importantly, is Jesus in you? There you go. There you go. Because see, if Jesus is in you, it's, he's going to manifest. Yes, he is. Now, he is going to manifest. Yes. What's in you going to come out? That's my pebble shit to say. If it's in you, it's coming out. Mm -hmm. Out of the heart, the mouth speaking. So if you serving Satan, if you serving Satan, he's going to come out. There you go. Uh huh. So if you offend me in any way, I'm going to get you told. Uh -huh. oh, yes. Just as sure as I, I don't care if I got to get online in front of everybody or get in I'm going to get you told. I'm going to get you back. Uh huh. There you go. Well, see, you telling me who it is. Uh huh. That's your servant. Jesus. Your servant. Uh huh. Come on. I don't care about what your title is. It doesn't have anything to do with that. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because when we are serving him, we die to the flesh. Daily. Crucify him. Daily. Daily. My God. And we don't mind looking stupid for him. There you go. Uh huh. He didn't say we were stupid. We just look stupid to the world. That's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I just told mm -hmm. her all. But honey, she couldn't say nothing. Yeah. What if he came back for you at that very moment? You couldn't say nothing. Why? The My God. It's filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus. The Holy Ghost wouldn't let you say nothing. Jesus. And if you say something, you're going to get it right. You're going to go to that person and you're going to apologize. Chosen. Uh huh. Yes. Chosen. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. God wants your heart. heart. All of you. All of you. Yes. Because that's what you just said. Mm -hmm. If you say the wrong thing, you will go quickly and apologize. And sometimes we may say the wrong thing. We will. I was right here in our town, right here. And uh, this has been maybe like about two months ago. Yes. I was there in Pastor Karen's store. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told and me. And all the whole little young lady, the personal salesperson was just, bless her heart. And I just come from the house of God. <laughs> she 
come on. Yes, heresy. And she was that. And she was just carrying on. And next thing I knew, I said something. I said, oh, well, you know what? Why don't you just go back from where you came? I said, because that wasn't nice of you. You could have. But then the Holy Spirit arrested me. He will do it. Oh, my Lord. I, it wasn't five minutes later. I was running up to that young lady. I said, please excuse me. Please. I said, I, I can't speak for you, but I got to speak for me. Yes. I said, there is no way I cannot come to you and say, I'm sorry. Yes. That I have disappointed my God. Yes. That's what he does when he has your heart. Yes. Because we understand that the flesh and the spirit is always warring against each other. Yes. And if we're not careful, we will allow our flesh mm -hmm. to rise up. Mm -hmm. And we will dis, we will not represent Jesus well. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Ghost re arrests us and say, go back. Mm -hmm. go back. And I'm usually the one that will take, take it, you know, turn this sheet, turn yes. this sheet, whatever. Yes. But the enemy says, oh, I'm going to get you today. I'm going to catch you off guard. And I'm going to catch you off guard. But even when he catches us off guard, that word that is in us. Yes. Rise up. Will draw us. us and, yes. Yes. And convict us. Yes. It and is. cause us to get it right. Get it. Right. And we won't tarry with it. No, we won't. Because we dare not let him come back and catch us with our work undone. Work undone. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people think that God has heaven and hell. He's not storing up our furniture and our cars and <laughs> our clothes and things in hell. That's <laughs> right. right. It's a place where people are going. Yes. As who are not living right. Come who on. are making up excuses for, I'm grown, I do what I want to do, I, I, I despise that. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says it's so we come as little children. Yes. I'm grown, really. Yes. Grown. That's what they say, Pastor. That's what's wrong with us. Too grown. We're so grown, God can't tell us nothing. Nothing. Oh my God. We God. know more than he knows. And, and really, we know nothing. And we don't realize this is the last hour. There you go. You know what the devil is saying? You know what? Didn't you hear that when you was a child? Nothing ain't happened yet. Happened and happened. that's what he did. You, know, you can keep on living like you're living. You can keep on doing yes. what you're doing. Yes. Because yes. how long? Yes. Like, yes. You've been here since you was a child. Nothing has happened. Do we not see the signs? Well, see, that's people who don't study their word. There you go. So they have been churches where they're not even teaching the word. And they're not make, holding them accountable to read the word, mm -hmm. to study the word. That is. That's it. To show yourself approved. And, and you know what else, Pastor? Let me tell you this. Because here's what I say in this house. This cannot be done without the Holy Ghost. My God. You can't interpret it without. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. Really. Yes. He teaches me so that I can teach you. Yes. So if you're going through the motion mm -hmm. of reading the mm -hmm. word and being as the Pharisees and the Sadducees, mm -hmm. Jesus came Pharisees and they said mm -hmm. because they were in religion mm -hmm. and reading the word without the Holy Ghost. Having on a form of godliness, godliness. but denying no power. No power. No power. power. That's why we don't have power to keep our mouths closed. That's why we don't have power to humble ourselves and go and apologize. That's why we don't have power to walk in forgiveness. That's, it. That's why we don't have power to get rid of arrogance and pride. That spirit. Yes. That spirit of pride. Witchcraft. All of it. Yes. And then, come on, Pastor. Uh, why are churches letting Jezebel run it? Why? Songwriter wrote a song years ago, years ago. I don't even know who the songwriter was. I was a girl, but I remember it. I did it my way. That's right. I know. I remember mm -hmm. that too. Because we just doing it our way. We still think it's my thing. I do what I want to do. And yes. we quick to tell people, don't nobody tell me what to do. Jezebel. Woo! Jezebel. Jezebel is a controlling spirit. There you go. And don't want to be told what to do. That's why we can't speak to nothing. And see results. That's it. Because we don't have nothing in us. Nothing. Nothing from nothing leave nothing. And that was so you awesome. can't speak no word if you don't have no word in you. Come on. Come on. See, I had to speak to that spirit that was operating, trying to <laughs> make me look stupid and crazy and whatever, like I wasn't a child of God. But it wasn't three minutes. I said, oh, Lord, please let me make it up there to that register so I can humble myself and apologize to her. And, 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 and she probably didn't know what to think. 
Jesus. Because they're not used to seeing real Christians. Ah. Yeah, like like you go to the grocery store and you have something on the bottom buggy on the bottom of the car. Mm -hmm. You forget to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You get to the car. Mm -hmm. Real Christians <coughs> go back uh -huh. into the store. I did it. And apologize mm -hmm. and say, I missed this. Mm -hmm. And and the cashiers are looking at you like, Really? Who are you? Really? He, are you from this planet? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Real no, Christians really. will even pull up at a drive through window, and the, the person behind, over there on that side taking the order could be nasty and arrogant, but real Christians will look in there if it's the last $2 they got and hand it to them yeah. and say, bless you. I know you're right. Mm -hmm. Because we do deal with, and we're going to deal with, mm -hmm. Nasty, yes, arrogant attitudes of people. Well, how do we wear them over? That's it. Uh -huh. How do we wear them over? We have to have the character. What would Jesus Christ. do? You we know, we had that going on years ago. Yes. What would Jesus do? You know what he told me? He said, Tell my people, do what I would do. That's uh -huh. it. And in, the, in, in any circumstances, just do what I would do. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. And Jesus never, in most cases, said a mumbling word. Nope. Even when he was being accused. He Even had to spend so much time in prayer. prayer. That's why he was able to overcome. Oh, come, on. come on. Overcome. Come on. In prayer. When folks said, hi, hi. Well, that's how I know how to treat people. Because outside of God and his word, I don't know nothing. Nothing. When I say nothing, I don't know nothing. nothing. Outside of him, I am nothing. That's it. That's it. Nothing. That's so every it. day I get up knowing that the greater is he is within me, and I got a hot date with him at 5 o'clock every morning. Oh my Good God. God. Come, Come on. Come on. A hot date. Hot date. Uh -huh. We walk around looking for a lover. Serious. Come on. Nobody can love you like him. Nobody. Nobody can love us like him. Nobody. Absolutely Come on. nobody. That's it. But we don't know how to spend time with our lover. And, and here's what I tell them here. You know, this big thing came out. Some uh, about uh, what they call it. Uh, that they are. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, date night. Date night with my mm -hmm. husband. Or with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But what do I tell them? Mm -hmm. I said, when you going to have a date night with Jesus? Uh, come on now. A date day with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And look, and don't let it be once every now and then. Let it be every day. Mm -hmm. You know, Apostle, I was married for 40 years. Come on. 40 years. My God. And I still have my wedding ring on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had a Christian ask me, being sarcastic. Yes. Pastor Beverly in one of our meetings. Pastor Beverly, um, why, why are you still wearing your wedding ring? Because you're divorced. Mm -hmm. your, husband left, your husband left you. Listen to Jezebel. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, your, your husband left you. Uh, he divorced you. So since, I mean, my husband, you me, why would I want to still wear the ring? I said, well, uh, you know, real love, first of all, uh, forgives. Yes. Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, and second of all, why would I just leave it sitting in the jury box? But even more importantly, I said I was married before I married him. My God. Married to him for 40 years, but I was married before I married him. You was married. I said, and I'm still married. Come on. So my husband is Jesus, and I carry myself just that way. Come on now. So I said, I got a man that walks with me. Talks with me, me, tells me I'm his own. Good God Almighty. My takes God. good care of me. Yes. My sleeps God. with me, wakes up with me, goes with me everywhere I go. Come on. Leads and guides me into all truth. Now, now who wouldn't have a lover like that? Somebody that's not in their right mind. But listen, we have come down to the last five minutes of this broadcast. But let me say this. By you wearing that wedding ring still wedding ring still you in your mind you're not looking for another man no man because you have a man now the person that wants to quickly take theirs off they want to say look i'm available mm -hmm. so now you got to go through all of that again mm -hmm. who wants to do that mm -hmm. when you have the lover and the quickly i'm going to say this people say well i mean what if god want to send your husband how he's going to send your husband you got a wedding ring on i said he'll be walking so close with the lord and talking with him that the lord will tell him she is available but you got to come to me glory 
So if he ain't walking and living that kind of life with God, he won't be able to read and understand. My God. No, ma'am. My God, Pastor Beverly. Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Pastor Beverly, listen. My God. Okay, we're going to have to have round two. <laughs> but listen. Listen. What is it that you can say to the audience? What can you leave with them? It's the last hour. I don't care what anybody's told you on the 6 o'clock news. I don't care what TikTok is telling you. I don't care what all of the social media. I don't care what your plaques on the walls are telling you. I don't care what the government is telling you. We are in the last hour. My God. <clears throat> Get it right with God. Get right with God. Get your household in order. My Get God. your lives ready. It's a critical 911 less hour. My God. Whoa. Critical. Last hour, 911. Less hour. I like that, Pastor. My God. Oh, what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? I tell you what, the anointing of God is in this room. And I trust and pray that it has been in your ear and in your face. But listen, <clears throat> Pastor Beverly and I are going to come back again at a later date. S send somebody this broadcast. Come on now, send it out so the men and women of God can hear what has been declared in this house. Amen. And until we come again. Which, <clears throat> I will say to you, we won't be broadcasting next week, next Friday. But until we come back, be blessed, yes. be safe, and get your life right. Critical 911 last hour. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Nebi kudu nebo.